Welcome to my series on how to make your first TAS. This series is going to go through everything you need to know to make a TAS, right from downloading the emulator all the way through to optimizing your final TAS. You might have some slight differences from this series with what game you want to pick, what console you want to TAS on, and so on, but this advice is hopefully very general and it should give you all the skills you need to make your first TAS. Okay, the very first thing we need to do before we start tazzing anything is we need to go to tazvideos.org and download an emulator. Now, most consoles can be emulated through something called BizHawk, aside from things like GameCube, which would use Dolphin and some other stuff. So um, if you're not sure, probably just grab BizHawk. That's your best bet. So we get the latest version of BizHook, especially if you're um, returning to Tazzing and you've got an old version of BizHook, you really need to update it. Because um, if you look at all the changes, they have like sync settings for all the consoles. So something in BizHook for say PlayStation could be different than an old version of BizHook. And generally the emulator gets more close to the console. So if you did your TAS on a really old version of BizHawk, it may not be accepted because old versions are inaccurate. So we go ahead and download ourselves the latest copy of BizHawk. Okay, at this point I've downloaded BizHawk 2.52, extracted it, and put it in this folder with all my other versions of BizHawk. Um, so if you open up EmuHawk, that is BizHawk. Uh, this is what it looks like. You have lots of options, open ROM, and then all these config options and stuff. Uh, before you do anything on this, we're going to actually need a ROM because it's kind of like having a console. If you don't have a cartridge or a ROM plugged in, then it won't do anything. Uh, so there's potentially another thing that you also need, which is firmware, but that depends on uh, what type of console you want to TAS for. If you want to TAS on NES, then you're fine. Adventure Island, there is a NES ROM, and I can open it, and it's just fine. There's Adventure Island. Um, but if I try and open a ROM from a different system, uh, say like Master System, and I want to open a ROM, I need the required firmware. Uh, so firmware, there's lots of different types of firmware. I'll just show you like all the different types. So if you wanted to TAS pretty much any of these consoles, you would need firmware. So most likely you're going to need firmware. Uh, getting firmware is a very similar process to getting a ROM. I mean, firmware literally is just a ROM. Uh, so if you do a search for what console you want, you can usually find the firmware pretty easily. Uh, similarly, to find your ROMs, you will need to do a Google search for that. Um, unfortunately, I can't link to the ROMs in this tutorial for legal reasons, but you should be able to find them pretty quickly. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to be doing a Sega Master System game called Castle of Illusion. Uh, so you can go ahead and download the firmware for the Master System and a ROM of Castle of Illusion. Okay, to actually set these up, uh, if I want the firmware, I'm going to go into my BizHawk, into the firmware folder, and put my firmware in there. And your ROMs can literally just be anywhere, so I'm going to leave them in here. Uh, so hopefully, there we go. So the whole reason for having the firmware there is to display that little splash screen for Sega Master System, and then the game should boot. Um, one last thing about ROMs, you may be finding many, many different versions of the ROMs. So like EB or U, and you've got different version numbers. Uh, quick rundown, uh, E means Europe, and U means the US. And you often also have J, which is Japan, and sometimes some other stuff like K, which is Korea. This B here means for Brazil. Um, and that, so they're just the reasons. Generally, to be safe, you'll want to TAS on the US version. So you'll want something with a bracket U at the end of that. Um, but it depends which version is fastest. Uh, if we have a look 
forecast of illusion on Taz videos. There is a Taz of this already published. And if we go to the submission, we'll be able to see the actual ROM file. So this person, TNT, has used Castle of Illusion US version 1.1. And we can hopefully see why that was used, maybe. No, we can't. So you want to have a look at um, the version differences. Uh, for now, we'll TAS on 1.1 because that's uh, what the current TAS uses. Um, but version 1.0 is usually earlier. So usually what will happen between version differences is they'll patch out glitches. So there may be some glitches in version 1.0 that they patched out in 1.1, which means that generally the earlier version, like 1.0, is generally faster for Tazzers. But that may be different. Sometimes in 1.1 they can adjust like some slight physics or something, and that may make that might make things slightly quicker. Um, so you never know. You need to do your research on which version is fastest. So which region is fastest, first of all. Usually it's US or Japanese. And then which version is fastest. Just another little note. Um, if I open the US version of a game and we turn on everything, so our frames per second and everything, we can see this is running at 60 frames per second. Um, but if I open the European version of the game, you can see that it runs at 50 frames per second. And this is the same for a NES game as well. Uh, so the US version of a NES game will run at 60 frames per second. And if I had the European version of this game, it would run at 50 frames per second. Um, so that's something called PAL and NTSC. With these older games especially, the US and Japanese versions will run at 60 frames per second, and that means that they actually literally run faster. Uh, when you get towards like Nintendo 64 and PlayStation, you still do get this 50 frames, 60 frames per second thing, but they usually compensate for it. But when you're talk, talking really old games like NES and Master System and Genesis and SNES, uh, the European versions will usually actually run slower. So you should steer clear of them pretty much. Some games do compensate for it though. Okay, that's going to be it on this part. Hopefully you've got your BizHawk set up. You've got some ROMs to play on BizHawk and you've got the firmware. If you want to play casually, you can. Um, just go ahead and set up some controls and you should be able to play the games casually. And you can get familiar with all your save state buttons and stuff and everything around that. But as you can see, I can play this game pretty well casually. Like so. Okay, so um, in the next part, we're going to go through uh, Taz Studio.